And don't forget the fact that he's also pitching in a pitcher's ballpark, so his stats will go up. Right. I, I just I, I don't see why you'd retire. I mean, it's Dan Heron, you know. He, and he's he, making ten million. I know. I, that's uh, it's not a bad deal for a guy like Dan Heron who hasn't had you know extreme success in the major leagues. Right. And the, I mean, he yeah, he has done. I mean, he's done he, well. But. He's had some really good years. And uh, the Royals, going back to them, they're probably not going to be able to re-sign their ace, James Shields. However, they did add a bat when they signed Kendrys Morales to a two-year contract with a club option for Saw a third year. Uh, you see, I, I, I don't know how good Kendrys Morales is. He was okay in 2012, I think, when he was with Seattle. You know, he didn't really do much uh, last year. It all sort of fell apart where I think it was 2009 or 10 when he uh, celebrated that walk-off home run and broke his leg when he jumped on home plate. That yeah. sort of fell down with him there. Yeah, well, he's still like a 25 home run kind of guy. And he another sort of thing, fits in with Kansas City. The I reason that it. he wasn't very good last year was because he waited until June to sign because no one wanted to give up a first-round draft pick to sign him. Right. Which kind of hurt him, which he saw Stephen Drew didn't perform very well after having to wait. Yeah, and uh, they were talking on MLB Network uh uh, the, the the guys were talking about how the Nationals, I mean, this is just like hypothetical stuff, but, you know, the, the Nationals weren't really looking to sign people, but they were looking to trades, and they were they were saying it's possibilities uh, that, you know, s- s- someone like Strasburg could be traded as like a higher possibility than people think. It's not going to happen, but, you know, uh, if, if the price is right, I, I don't know what the Nationals would do. Right, right, and then you see the tw- uh, the starting pitching market is getting thinner as the Twins signed Irvin Santana to a right. nice four year deal, which he deserved every penny of that. Yeah, I-, I do like Irvin Santana. He's a very durable, good you know two or three guy in a, especially well with the Twins rotation. I guess he'd be their their new ace, wouldn't he? He would be. Yeah, because you know you know who's left after that? Ricky Nolasco. Uh, you know I I don't know about that, uh, but you know that sort of. Is you know Atlanta got you know traded Jason Hayward and now Irvin Santana goes and signs with uh, the, the the Twins. I mean, I don't know how much Atlanta has left. I don't think they have a real good shot at doing anything this year. No, especially when you still owe thirteen million to Dan Ugla and the Cubs got uh, La Stella from them too, who was a pretty good middle infielder for them. Right, and one team that I'm surprised that didn't make any moves at the winter meetings is the New York Mets. They have a major major need at shortstop. Huge, and then they go and say, "Oh, we're we're going to stick with Wilmer Flores as our shortstop." Where he's not good defensively. That's the thing, and he's not even good with the bat. That's the thing. The NL East is very interesting right now. The Phillies are in a rebuilding mode, sort of. Yeah, I, I you know, we still don't know what's going to happen with Cole Hamels. But um, their GM's an idiot. By the time they're ready to compete again, Hamels will be go- will have been le- will either be gone as a free agent or he'll be so old that he won't be very good. <laughs> so you, you have you know the Braves haven't done much, or the the Braves aren't in a position right now where where I can say they can compete for the NLEs. all they did was sign Alberto Callespo to a one year right. contract. The Mets aren't in a situation right now where you'd say that they could win the NL East. Not even close. The Phillies are not in a situation at all right now where you can say that they could win the NL East. So that just leaves, uh, the so that just leaves Washington and Miami. Those Which, those are your two best teams right now in the NL East. Surprisingly enough, I I think I mean the, the Nationals clearly are the best team, but you know after that it's Miami or Atlanta, and I think I'd rather take Miami right now. Right, right, and the now to the NL Central, that division definitely, the Cardinals added a right-handed bat in Mark Reynolds who can come off the bench and hit and play for He's a Matt good Adams. Player. I like him. Yeah, someone that uh, can spell a day off against a tough lefty. And then the Pirates re-signed Francisco Lariano for three years. They acquired, Serviceable pitcher. He's good. Yeah, three years, $39 million. And then they go and re- they, re-sign, or they sign A.J. Burnett, and then they go and trade for Antonio Bastardo from the Phillies to get another good left-handed reliever in the bullpen. Yeah, uh, you know, the NL Central, we'll, we'll talk more about the divisions after an update, but the NL Central, I mean, Milwaukee, you know, is going to be pretty bad next year, I could say. Right, they were better. They played better than they should have last year. Ramos Ramirez is another year they older. They don't even... Oh, wait. Ryan Braun is not what he used to be without the roids. No, he's not. <laughs> and then, of course, you have... I know Adam Lynn's the new first baseman. Giovanni Gallardo is way overrated, in my opinion. So, yeah, you know, there's... St- I mean, their bullpen's going to be good. It's just there's... I don't think their starting pitching will be good enough. So, anyways, we're going to take a quick update. We'll continue our winter meetings talk... 
Uh, welcome back to Sports Renegades on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Risky. I'm Ryan Stupridge. And you can keep up with the show on Twitter at the Sports Renegades. You can give us a like on Facebook at the Sports Renegades. You can individually follow me or contact me on Twitter at rrisky16. And at Ryan Stupridge. That's S-T-U-P-R-I-C-H in case you didn't know, which a lot of people don't. But anyway, uh, yeah, we were talking about the NL Central, um, and we were sort of going through each division right now, sort of, uh, as far as the winter meetings concerned and what it means. Um, you know, it, it's going to be interesting with, with the NL Central because St. Louis, uh, you know, they lost some of their starters, but they but they definitely improved. Um, they, they improved offensively. They improved with their role players, as we were talking about Mark Reynolds, who uh, goes from Milwaukee to St. Louis. Um, you know, that also tells you Milwaukee has no first baseman now. I well, mean, they Lyle have Adam Over- Lind. I, I, that, that's right. They did get Adam Lind. I don't know what happens to Lyle Overbay. Now, I, I completely forgot that they got Adam Lind. Yeah, so so they did get somebody who can start every day at least. Well, I don't, know a, about, what on, I don't know about against left-handed pitching. Right, against left-handed. That, that's where Lyle Overbay, I guess, comes in. I don't know. He's not very good either. But, uh, you know, Milwaukee definitely, I think Milwaukee's going to finish last. Or Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati didn't necessarily improve, in my opinion. No, they, they, if anything, they got worse. All they did they was did. they just got some minor, like not really many notable minor leaguers in return for Matt Latos and Alfredo Simone. And remember, they gave up a major haul to acquire Latos. And, uh, I mean, I know Phillips was, you know, on and off last year. Votto was hurt for a lot of the year. You know, both of them are old and washed up. Their their offense will probably be improved from last year just for the fact that, you know, if Votto stays healthy, he'll have, they'll have probably a better year. But, um you know, Milwaukee and Cincinnati, I think, are going to be fighting for last place, which leaves the Cubs, uh, you know, sort of uh, in that middle ground. Uh, ho- ho- hopefully they'll they'll be better than that. Uh, the Pirates, you know, will always be relevant with Andrew McCutcheon, and, their, and they have a pretty good pitching staff as well and s- some good uh, middle infielders and stuff. And then St. Louis, uh, you know, is always going to be relevant too. It's, it's going to be interesting to see who can win that division. Right now I'd give the edge probably to St. Louis just because it's St. Louis. But I could see the Cubs and Pirates competing all the way to the end. Yeah, I think it's just going to be St. Louis. For whatever reason, they just seem to win it every year. Right. But that, you know, that that that, that doesn't mean the the Pirates and Cubs are out of wild card contention. Um, you know, and hopefully the Cubs will be in that discussion because that's all that I really want. I mean, I'm not expecting them, you know, to go to the playoffs necessarily next year, but I am expecting them to be a lot better and possibly have a wild card because that would be really exciting. That would be. They'd actually be playing meaningful games in May this year. Yeah, and that that would be exciting. Of course, um, the Cubs also have a really exciting game. I, I think everybody's looking forward to it already. Sunday, April fifth, the Cubs and the Cardinals open up baseball with us with a uh, Sunday night game on ESPN two. So that'll be really exciting at Wrigley Field. Right, and it'll be interesting. Wayne Wright Lester. Well, we'll see. They, the Cubs haven't announced that yet. Maybe Arietta could win the job from Lester. We don't know. <laughs> I. I don't know if that's going to happen, although Arietta did have a hell of a year. And, um, you know, the Cardinals might not be done yet. You know, it, you know, if if they get uh, Scherzer, if they get Shields, you know. No, they said they're not adding a big – they're not spending a ton of money on a free agent. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect them to. But uh, let's move over to the NL West right now. The NL West, obviously the Dodgers improved tremendously. Yeah, they did. Actually, yeah, actually we'll – actually preview the NL West mm-hmm. after a quick timeout we'll running look, up against the break. And then we'll look at the uh, American League, too, and that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on now because the winter meetings, a lot of stuff happened. This has probably been the most exciting winter meetings I can remember. Sports Renegades, SportsTownChicago.com, broadcasting live eight or 6 to 8 p.m. on yes. Thursday night. Uh, after all these weeks, I still think it's 8 to 10. <laughs> Anyways, Ryan Risky and Ryan Stepperich here. And, of course, big, big, probably the best uh, week of any free agent period in all of sports. Yeah, I, I have to say so. I, it was definitely really exciting. Uh, by the way, before we go back to winter meeting stuff, just a couple updates. The Rams have a 3 nothing lead over the Cardinals. They kicked a field goal. They currently have the ball. There's 6.57 left in the first quarter there. And the Hawks have added on to their two-goal yeah, lead. Yeah, didn't Kane score? It's a three-goal lead and uh, 2.37 left in the second quarter. Who's in goal? In the second period. And, yes, Patrick Kane scored with an assist by Chris Versteeg. Who, uh, who was in goal for the, the Bruins? No, for the Hawks. Is it Darling or Ranta? Um, I will take a look in a second here. Um, but, yeah, talking about the NL West, 
as uh, you know, it's definitely really interesting to see. Uh, um, it is uh, Scott Darling. Man, oh, he's sure been yeah. good. I mean, like, he was like a nobody when they called him up in his first game. He had like 35 saves, and he's been continuing to dominate. Right. Yeah, it's uh, he's definitely doing a good job after Corey Crawford made a fool of himself. <laughs> yeah, they actually concert. said there's a small chance he returns this weekend. It's very unlikely. I'm actually going to the game Sunday against Calgary for Brent Seabrook bobblehead day. Ooh, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once again, the bobblehead days are the days to go. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's not a better promotion usually than a bobblehead. So, no, exciting. no. Usually, the baseball teams have some pretty good promotions. Other than mm-hmm. that, uh, football. The Bulls the, don't have. I was looking at the Bulls promotional schedule. Besides a couple of bobbleheads here and there, there's like nothing. Yeah, there, nothing that you'd like choose a certain game because I of the saw, promotion. There's like a promotion. It's like an oven mitt or something. I'm like, come on. It's like a DiGiorno pizza oven mitt. I think I got those one time I God, went there. how embarrassing are the Bulls for that? <laughs> one time I got an apron from the Hawks as a promotion. <laughs> I mean, can, the funny... Uh, cook with that Bulls apron, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, it's like, these are the type of... I got a winter hat from the Hawks. Once, better, except except the like funny that, thing is, yeah. these are actually like little things that like it's just kind of like, oh, well, I don't have to go out and buy them now. Yeah. Except I wouldn't go. True. I wouldn't go and like choose the. <laughs> I wouldn't go out and look at the promotional schedule. Like, you know what? I want to go to this game to get the oven mitts. You go to uh, Crate and Barrel to get your oven mitts and your apron and stuff. <laughs> I guess you, you don't have to anymore. Uh, but yeah, the NL West. Uh, you know, the Rockies are still going to be sort of in a uh, in baseball hell. I guess you could say. Although, uh, I mean, everyone loves Troy Tulowitzki. Um, the, the Diamondbacks uh, did a couple of things. I, I don't know how competitive they're going to be, but uh, they did a couple of things, which doesn't, you know, it doesn't really hurt their team as much. I mean, I know that they, that they don't have Wade Miley. Miguel Montero got traded, but it's not like they got horrible things back. No, they didn't get, like, terrible things back, except they also didn't get, like, things that will probably contribute, like, in a – like a very positive way, like immediate impact at the right. major league level. It's it's pretty much a three team race in that NL West. I mean, this is just obviously really early season things, but you know, it, it's uh, it's pretty much a three team race between the Padres being at the, the bottom of those three. The, Do you uh, really think the Padres are going to be that great this year? I think they're going to be better than the Diamondbacks and Rockies. Well, yeah, there's I know. no reason why they well, shouldn't. I, be. I just mean like, well, you mean three team race? Like, do you actually think they'll be in like the hunt? No, not necessarily in the hunt. Um, although they're not, I don't think they'll be as bad as last year. I mean, they, they got a couple good position players like Jed Guyarco. He's a pretty good hitter. Um, yeah, I think he batted 180 last year. He was Giarco was horrible last year. Uh, well, it, it was uh, 2013. I think he had a better year. He did. Yeah, he hit have, 22 home runs a couple years ago. Yeah. It, 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 they have a couple, okay, you know, Alexi Amarista is a decent player. Yeah, you know, They uh, have, you know, a couple good things, although that they did get rid of Chase Headley last year. They should, like, get a new, like, fix that ballpark. Like, it's impossible to hit in because of the dimensions and the the height of the walls and then throwing the fact that you got the winds hollowing in off of the Pacific Ocean. Right. I mean, obviously it's pretty much just a race between the Giants and Dodgers. The Do- You know, the Giants will probably be in wild card discussion again, but... Um, Losing Pablo Sandoval might be a bigger thing than we think because, I mean, he pretty much was clutch all postseason long. All three of their World Series, he's been probably the most clutch player overall. Right. It also depends how they replace him because they don't want to offer Chase Headley a ton of money. Like, who, yeah. who's going to replace him? I know they were interested in Luis Valbuena, except the Cubs' uh, front office values him too much. Yeah. And, I mean, Luis Valbuena, you know, until Chris Bryant com- comes up, I'm okay with Luis Valbuena. At third base. Um, I'm okay with him. I'd be okay with him playing starting at second base. I mean, he, he's a great guy. He's a left-handed. Has, it seems like he's, his power is developing more The every problem is year. he can barely bat 260, which is kind of an issue. But uh, he That's is pretty, not a major issue. When, but the, but the, he is pretty pr- productive. I, well, the thing I agree is with you he there. walks a lot. His on-base percentage is 350. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does draw a lot of walks. Um, Doesn't strike out much either. You know, he always hits those... Uh, doubles in the gap and stuff which is pretty exciting too and he'll hit some shots in the corner i mean he hit 16 home runs last year yeah no he's not a bad player by any means which is probably why the the padres were interested um G- giants yeah that the the giants were interested um but yeah you know now going to the american league well the padres are also interested in cespedes except uh though they wouldn't give up tyson ross right right yeah, uh, I like Tyson Ross. Yeah, they, they would only yeah. give up Ian Kennedy, and then the Red Sox, of course, would want more, and they wouldn't do it. Right. 
the American League, the Red Sox got uh, 